may we step anew into that place where love and justice will prevail. And in the name of all that is holy, we pray. Amen. Black lives have been lost to the violence of the vigilante, the cruelty of the marketplace, and the silence of the comfortable. We understand that black lives are sacred, inherently valuable, and irreplaceable. We know that to oppress the body of the human is to break the heart of the divine. We yearn for the day when the bent will stand straight. We pray that the hearts of our country will soften to the pain endured for centuries. We will do all we must to bind up the wounds, to heal the shattered hearts, to break the yoke of oppression. As the beauty of the heavens is revealed to us each day, may each day reveal to us the beauty of our common humanity. Amen. Summon what your spiritual authority may be, and please join me in prayer. In the name of all that is holy, we see you and we know your name. Racism, white supremacy, police violence. We see you and we know your name, and in the name of all that we call holy, we rebuke you. We also know that any power that you may hold is a pittance, and barely anything to be weighed against the power of that which is holy. And in this moment, where we see you, we name you, and we rebuke you, we also say that your grasp on us is ended. The chains that you've placed upon the beloved children created in the image of love are fallen away. May we step anew into that place where love and justice will prevail. And in the name of all that is holy, we pray. Amen. in Hebrew starts with comfort. Yah is my shepherd, I shall not want, giving me repose in green meadows, leading me beside still waters to revive my spirit, guiding me on the right path, for that is Yah's essence. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no harm, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your staff and your rod comfort me, but then it changes to a psalm of power. You prepare a banquet for me in the presence of my foes. That means I am coming into my power. We are coming into our power. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and kindness will be my portion the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of Yah forever. A prayer that this psalm become truth, lived and embodied, that we mourn and we organize, and there will come a day when we all live in the house of Yah together. Dear fellow white Christians, the hour is upon us. It is time to wake up. The voice of Jesus is crying out through our black, brown, and indigenous siblings of color. Are you still asleep? We have been in grief and anguish, betrayed, enslaved, tortured, starved, diseased, robbed, jailed, lynched, raped, murdered, disappeared, terrorized over and over and over again on this land to this very day. Please, wake up! Dear fellow white Christians, the hour is upon us to heed these words of Jesus to get up and go to the garden. Go to the garden and let the anguish of black lives pierce our souls. Go to the garden
garden and fall prostrate on the ground in grief for what has been done and for what has been left undone. Go to the garden and wrestle with the painful truth that the betrayer is here and the betrayer is us. It is time to go to the garden. Go to the garden and confess that we have been asleep while black lives have been crucified. Go to the garden and confess our complicity in systems that betray the very values we claim to profess. Go to the garden and confess that our spirits may have been willing, but our bodies have been weak, unable to stand in solidarity without being followed back to Hello, white Christian. The hour is upon us, and it is time. Time to go to the garden and confess how scared we are, and how defensive we can be, how ashamed we feel, and how desperately we do not want to do this. How ignorant we have been and how unprepared we feel to meet this moment. But I tell you this, the Holy Spirit is not concerned whether we are prepared or not. The hour is upon us. It is time to wake up, to get up and go to the garden. Go to the garden and surrender with Jesus. Go to the garden and pray to the God of creation and liberation. Not my will, but your will be done. Go to the garden and pray to the spirit of truth and justice. Not what I want, but what you want. Go to the garden and say to the power of love, through which all things are possible. I surrender my life and my privilege, my strengths and my weaknesses, my fears and my fragility. I place my entire life into your hands, no matter the cost, no matter the cost, so that your will your will of justice and mercy and life abundant may be fulfilled for every single beloved child of God, no exceptions. Dear fellow white Christians, the hour is upon us. It is time to wake up. Get up. Let us be on our way. breaks down and builds up again, we need to be reborn. O oh, teacher Jesus, who looted the temple, you knew that not all institutions can be reformed. Some of them have to be taken down until not one brick stands on another. Send the angel of death to slay the systems and institutions which drain and destroy our lives, not least an economy which sacrifices black and brown bodies on the altar of profit, and a culture which sacrifices our children on the altar of white supremacy. Burn them down, O consuming fire, and gather together a people who are led by thy spirit to build new and equitable systems out of the rubble. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who reigns with thee in the Holy Spirit, all that is known and called holy, we pray these things. Amen. ...and seem to communicate exhaustion over the sudden forced awareness of black culture, along with acknowledging his recent introduction to the concept of white fragility, he alluded to needing a moment to breathe. I understood his predicament, and I appreciated his transparency, but the sentiment stuck with me. Do we really 
need a moment to breathe. Is this the moment for our white allies to feel overwhelmed? While the tear gas clears from our urban centers, breathing seems central to our current struggle. New Age proponents of mindfulness implore us to focus on every breath we take. Oftentimes, that can seem ordinary or even prosaic, but in fact, moment to moment, it sustains our very lives. We know how George Floyd died. The world watched in horror as a powerfully built man called out for his dead mother's intervention. We watched in horror and we counted his breath. In a way, every black body has a counter on it, a counter of how many breaths it will take. In almost every case, it is too few. As we navigate impossible terrain and advocate alongside our non-black allies, we continue to assert the basic virtue of the right to breathe while recognizing the fleeting nature of that breath. And some of us do need to hold our breath, if just for a moment, as we breathe life into a new future. Who is to say that equality is impossible? Who is to say that equality might not supersede even equity as the goal on a new landscape of potential? As we head into the coming weeks, we can maintain the hope that racism is struggling with its last breath. And remember that many of the struggles of this moment transcend race and ethnicity. On this day, we acknowledge the trickle-down justice that Juneteenth commemorates, and we hope for something more. I'm going to invite you now to die for the next 8 minutes and 46 seconds. As you are able to lie down, as you are able to feel yourself not in a position of power, or of control.